Hey, this is Pastor Big Al. Thank you so much for watching my videos and leaving questions in the comment section. I'm going to continue to do my very best to answer those questions. So if you still have a question, would you just leave it in the comment section? And uh, I hope you all enjoy today's video. Good morning. It is Thursday morning, October 24th. I have my cup of coffee and I have my Bible. I also have a couple of questions in the comment sections that I'm going to deal with today. Uh, on Tuesday, I did a video on children obeying their parents, and I did it in the context of a Christian family. And I, and I said that, that the best way that that we can demonstrate God's relationship with the world is through the covenant of a marriage. You see that uh, husbands should love their wives just as Christ loved the church and gave up his life for her. And wives should submit to their husbands just like the church submits to God. And children should obey their parents because this is pleasing to the Lord. And as, as I showed you on, on Tuesday that, that Christ has set the perfect example, but the church doesn't always set that great example on, on submitting to God. And we as the children of God definitely don't always set that perfect example on what it means to be obedient uh, to, to God. But in that video... I had a question in the comment section. This question comes from Gunnar Crispin. And the question is, what if you're gay and you believe in God and follow the Bible? And uh, about a week ago, I received another question in the comment section from XXUnknown underscore legend XX. And their question was, can you make a video about gay slash LGBTQ? And I thought, well, I can do both of those uh, questions in the same video video. So I want to start off by asking you, where do you get your source of truth? Is your source of truth the science or is your source of truth the Word of God, the Bible? And the reason that that is important is because on this subject of LGBTQ, uh, science and the Bible are on the opposite extremes. They're on the opposite extremes. For example, science says that this is the way that you were born. This is how you were made. And the Bible, according to Romans chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, says that this is not natural. And so, like I said, science and, and God's word are on the opposite extremes when we are talking about the LGBTQ question. But the question in the comment section from Gunnar Crispin, remember, is... Uh, what if you're gay and you believe in God and follow the Bible? So uh, the question was concerning the Bible, and therefore we're going to look in the Bible for an answer to this question. So I want to I want to turn your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter five, and I'm going to start reading with verse nine. 1 Corinthians five, starting with verse nine. It says, I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people. Yet I certainly did not mean with the sexually immoral people of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or idolaters since then you would need to go out of the world. But now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral or covetous, or an idolater, or a reveler, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. For what have I to do with judging those out also who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, God judges. Therefore, put away from yourself the evil person. Now, I want to stop there because I want to share with you three things that I caught just from those few verses of Scripture. The first is that it is not the church's responsibility to judge those outside of the church. And so, for the most part, the LGBTQ community has, has stayed outside the church. And therefore, it's not the church's responsibility to go around saying uh, that you're, you're a sinner and you're going to hell and, 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 and casting judgment upon those who are outside the church. Because here's the important part that you need to understand. 
their source of truth is coming from science. Our source of truth is coming from the Bible, which means that their source of truth and our source of truth are not the same source of truth. And, and therefore, um, it, we're not called to, to cast judgment upon them. God will take care of that. God will judge those. The second part is those who are inside the church. Those who are inside the church that are, uh, they call themselves brothers. They call themselves fellow Christians. They call themselves uh, uh, believers, okay? Now, now these, uh, we are allowed to judge. Not so much judge, but we are allowed to share the truth as it pertains to the Bible. And so as it pertains to the Bible, sexual immorality is a sin. As it pertains to the Bible, covetous is a sin. Idolatry is a sin. Revel, reveler is a sin. Drunkard, uh, extortioner. Uh, these are our sins. And according to our scripture, if there are those that are inside the church calling themselves brothers, calling themselves Christians, calling themselves believers, and they're participating in this, our scripture says, have no fellowship with them. In fact, it goes so far to say, do not even eat with them. Now, here's the part where I think that the church around the world is failing to obey the, the Holy Scriptures because the church, they don't want to push anybody away. They don't want to, um, to be offensive. They, they believe that we're supposed to be loving and we're supposed to be accepting and we're supposed to be uh, a tolerant of all of these things. But the real reason that they do that is because the church doesn't want to offend anybody. The church doesn't want to step on toes because, because those people, when you step on toes, then those people stop coming to your church or they stop giving money to your church. And when they stop, then you're no longer getting paid as a pastor or you're no longer able to do all of those uh, functions and things that you could do when, when you had their, their tithes and you had their offerings. And so we don't want to be offensive to anybody, but... Our scripture is pretty clear that those who are inside the church are not under the standard of the truth as science, but are under the standard of the Bible. And if we're under the standard of a Bible, then you, you hold them to the standard of the Bible. And the Bible says that's a sin, and we as the church aren't supposed to be accepting of sin, tolerant of sin. And so that's the second thing that's important. The other thing that I want to share with you is just by the definition sexually immoral, sexual immorality. It means that there has to be a moral standard for sexuality. And so what is God's moral standard of sexuality? I believe that God's moral standard of sexuality, according to the scripture, is sexual relations between a husband and a wife in the covenant of a marriage. And therefore, any kind of sexual relations outside of a marriage between a husband and a wife is sexually immoral. Therefore, if it's premarital sex, that's a sin. If you are living together and not married and having sexual relationships, that's a sin. If you are married and having an extramarital affair, that's a sin. If you are participating in homosexuality, that's a sin. According to uh, our scripture today, according to the word of God. Now, I want to share uh, with you in chapter 6. 1 Corinthians 6, we'll start with verse 9 again. He says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Now, I want y'all to see that there's a whole list of a bunch of sin. All the way from being drunkards and extortioners and, and uh, thieves uh, and even covetous. You know, just coveting, wanting something that's not yours, even that. Uh, 
he, he, he clumps them up with fornicators, meaning people who are having <clears throat> relationships outside of marriage. He includes those with the homosexuals and the adulterers. And the adulterers are, are those who are having relationships while they're married. They're having an extramarital relationship. And idolaters. Uh, he clumps all of those together and he says, here's the bad news. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you are participating in those things, according to the Bible, you're not going to go to heaven. Now listen to verse 11 because this is the good news, okay? The good news is, and such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. You see, the good news is none of us were Christian before we came to Christ. <laughs> well, that's silly. None of us were Christian before we came to Christ. In other words, each of us were part of that, that group, that grouping of, of sinners, that grouping of those that, that don't belong. And as long as we were outside the church, that was okay. You know, the church wasn't allowed to judge us. But as soon as we came inside the church, as soon as we're calling ourselves believers and we're calling ourselves brothers and Christians, all of a sudden we're now hold to another standard. And another standard says if you're inside the church and you're a believer and you're a Christian, then, then you're supposed to live like a believer and like a Christian. And Jesus Christ died to save you from your sin. Not to give you permission to continue in your sin, he died to wash you and to sanctify you by the power of Jesus' name and by the Holy Spirit of God. Now, listen to verse 18 through 20. It says, Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. See, I want to close with this. I don't know where you're at. I don't know where you're at. For if you're listening to this video today, I don't, I don't know where you're at spiritually. Because there's a lot of us that, that call ourselves Christian. A lot of us that call ourselves brothers and believers. But we're still living the adulterer life. We're still, we're still living the covetous life. We're still living the, the homosexual life. And if we're brothers and we're Christians and we're inside the church, then that life is not right anymore. God sent Jesus to die for us to save us from that life. You see, Gunnar Crispin, you asked the question, what if you're gay and you believe in God and follow the Bible? And I don't think that's possible. I don't think it's possible for a person to be gay and follow the Bible. Because if the standard of truth that you find is the Bible, you're not going to find anything from Genesis to Revelation and Revelation back to Genesis that says anything good, anything positive about the LGBTQ. Every bit of it in, throughout this is, is negative. Uh, from, from it being an um, abomination to it being unnatural to it being called an evil person to to the final conclusion that you'll not inherit the kingdom of God. So if this is where you at, if this is where you're at, I pray today that, that uh, you accept the, the precious gift of, of Jesus Christ. He died to save you from your sin, not to give you permission to live in it any longer. You have been bought at a price. You belong to God. Therefore, honor God with your body. Thank you guys so much for, uh, for your questions. Uh, keep asking your questions. Thank you for spending time in God's word with me today. And I pray that y'all all have a good day. Bless you.